Hey guys, I'm Phoenix here and welcome to Astroneer. Now this is a game that I played a little while back. I say a little bit while back. I think it was, I've been playing it a lot anyway since it got released. It got released last week in a pre-alpha state and I, uh, in this example here, um, I am on a radioactive planet. And as a result, I've had to change how I play the game because on that first planet you can have solar panels and that just pretty much charges all the time. This world you can't really do do the same with that because there's not a huge amount of sun all the time but there's an awful lot of wind so um, wind vanes are a better way to go. And that's what's quite interesting about this game in, in that all the planets are actually different which is not necessarily something you see all of the time and you know I think this is a very good example of what early access games should be uh, in this just in this pre-alpha we have planets and so hold on if I, I think I should have the ability to launch I'm not too concerned about this um, this level anymore so this is my ship and if I just launch up all right, so now we are orbiting a planet. So this planet is procedurally generated to a certain extent. Obviously, uh, it's designated that this is a, um, a radiated planet, but I could go to the Terran planet if I wanted to. All of this is time-based, so if I wait too long, uh, I can't, can no longer go to that planet. But I could go to the exotic planet or the arid planet or... I think that's the tundra world so you do have options there's a few different planets to go to there's the barren one over there I do want to go back to the Terran one um, for certain resources that I can't get on the radiated one hydrazine um, and compound and so yeah basically they're all reasonably um, independent of one another and I think before I go to somewhere like the arid planet, I want to make sure that I've got plenty of compound and um, resin before I go there. So I'm just going to wait and I'll hang around and I'll talk about some of the other things as well that's quite impressed me. So I am on the developer build at the moment. Um, so I'm getting all the updates as uh, updates are pushed to the developer branch. Basically expect a little bit more of a rocky experience for the developer branch but on the other hand you'll get the performance fixes before the stable branch does which isn't necessarily a bad thing because um, the game wasn't released in a great state for some users I was one of those who suffered from some very very severe issues uh, to the point where the game would crash. Now that has actually stopped from what I can tell. Um, the performance fixes have done a great deal for stopping an awful lot of those little crashes that I was getting. Both the major hard locks that the computer was suffering from and the far more minor soft locks that I would get every so often. You can literally play for a two hour stint now without issue. And that's a really good thing to see a, a developer do. Now obviously there's little hitches here and there as um, as bits of the planet load in. Also, rather annoyingly, I was about to say that that was a bug, but no, that's actually been fixed now that all the points of interest um, got skewed. But no, um, I am going to land over there, and hopefully I'll land in the right sort of place. There's a few issues with landing. Obviously, the uh, you land in specific spots, and if you've got something in the way of that spot, uh, it can go a little bit weird. Anyway, so this is my little base. Um, I'm just gonna hook the that up. There's a way to do it. I can't. Uh, it's clicking on there on a specific spot, which isn't actually popping up. Yay, bugs. Uh, anyway. So yeah, this is my 
area and I've got trucks here so this is a truck which you can have with your you, can, you know you can have your solar panel on there you've got your um, seating arrangement and I've got storage on the back but that's not just storage because you can also put on storage um, pieces on top of that so let's see if I've got the spare storage module um, just checking to make sure there's not you can see the storms as they roll in and I suspect they actually roll straight round the planet as well not totally sure but yeah there's, uh, there's an awful lot to uh, to do in this game something I found out today as well was that you can shape the terrain up so you can fill in all these holes that you've made so you don't keep falling in, into them with your, your truck you can also flatten the terrain once you've brought it up a bit obviously this does use power or a bit of power because um, it's sort of my, almost like reverse mining but you can use this when you're crossing mountains for example to um, to build yourself bridges so if you hold alt you can bring this stuff up if you're mining normally it would just go down and if you hit control it turns it into a sort of a flattened mode so you can just make it all nice and flat so that it's not too bumpy for you to drive along which I think is a really nice feature full voxel worlds with the ability to shape terrain reasonably easily even in a sort of a survival-esque mode isn't that what we all really want and add, you add to that the fact that um, I can easily see what's in my backpack because I can just open my backpack and move these modules around I don't even need to be in my backpack for some of this stuff. You can even, um, if I put, say, my, I want to put, eventually put this into my smeltery, which is over there somewhere, I think. I don't know, where is it? It's there. Okay, so if we take this and we put it up here somewhere. And then we get into, say, for example, a dust storm might be coming along. So you can jump into your command module like that. And then you can just move stuff around. Now, you can't open your backpack when you're in the module. But um, you can just do stuff like this. And then you can actually operate this stuff to make the smelter actually do things all from the comfort of your command module which I think that's quite a nice little thing it kind of goes from being a very strict sort of third person survival game to being almost like an RTS in this mode because you can move things around in your base and build items modify items so you've got um, you start off with the, the rover and the shuttle and then you research the spaceship and the truck that's the truck. I do have a rover around here somewhere. I have no idea where it is. That's the spaceship. And again, I've got a shuttle around here. I think that's the shuttle over there. The shuttles and the spaceships need hydrogen to move. Whereas... Oh, we do have... So I can just move that. Say, uh, right. I need to just put that into storage. So I'll do that. And I can move that over there if I wanted to, and it kind of opens out to be a flat panel. And what's quite interesting about these storage modules, so you might go off on your adventures somewhere. And when you come back, your storage module is full of loot. So you can very, very easily... Um, move these things around and if you put a pallet full of raw um, stuff onto here let me just move this up here if I grab some I think I had some in my backpack yeah I do um, so if I just put some of that into here then I move that over to my 
hate this thing. Okay, right? That will then automatically move into the smelter, and then it will automatically then fill up um, the the pallet. So you can very very easily, quick and quickly, move these pallets of things around. Which again is is another very very nice little feature, which they didn't really need to add to the game, but they did, and it's brilliant that they did that. Now I'm probably not. I think I've researched everything in this game. Yeah, so I'll just get out some hydrazine, which goes straight into that one. I need more storage, really. I'm running really low on storage out here. So yeah, your hydrazine just goes straight into um, these things. But I mean, you can pack it full of hydrazine and send it up, and it's not going to go into it until you actually feed it in. So yeah, I've... I really like the game, ultimately. Um, I think it is. Could it? Yeah, I think I would. Well, I would definitely say that this is the best best early access game of uh, 2016, and it's one of the stronger contenders for being a sort of um, a game that I would most like to see uh, evolve. Actually, I think it, yeah, I think I would happily say that it is the the, the game that I would most uh, that I would quite like to see um, evolve. Um, just kind of see where it goes. I mean, they've got a lot of potential here. I mean, even now you look at the game. So, on release, this is a pre-alpha build. So, on release, they have multiple planets. They have orbital mechanics. They have voxel worlds. They have procedurally generated planets. They have a research system, they have four different types of vehicle, and each one can be modified to suit your needs. You can tow your vehicles um, around, uh, so you can put a truck behind a truck and tow it like that, or you could put a buggy behind a buggy, uh, or you know whatever you want to do really. So you can have trailers, essentially. Uh, you have... Um, an established building system. You have a um, a tether system, so that you don't, so you can put tethers along, so you can easily find your way back. Um, it's just a very, very nice game, and it's only a pre-alpha so far, and it performs pretty well, all in all. And yeah, I had problems when it first was first released, but those problems have vanished, and I think that's why I would say that this is the be best early access game of 2016 because yeah there's issues but they were quick fixed very very quickly uh, we expect them in an early access game we, we always expect issues in an early access game but what matters is how do the developers deal with those issues and how those developers um, portray their game in, in an early state I mean, you look at things like um, After Reset After Reset when it was released in early access at a $50 price tag had very little gameplay I mean by very little gameplay I mean you could walk around a level you couldn't really interact with it you could just walk around it uh, this has a lot, an awful lot more gameplay in it for something that is technically only a um very early build so yeah I I really enjoy it I really like it um, we'll see where it goes ultimately because I, I you know obviously I have been burned by uh, early access games before you only really need to look at games like Space Engineers to really see that some developers um, look like they're doing well and it doesn't really end up um, what the game could have been or wanted to be in the first place. But so far, you know, so good. We we see a sort of almost subnautical, a subnautica experience here, where we've got a lot awful lot of good strong concepts in here, and it's just really a case of um, adding a little bit more to the game. Um, I don't really know what I would like to see added, though, to the game. 
I think more research, certainly more just things to build, things that are going to be useful. Um, and obviously, you know, you do need to have a little bit of polish because you can see that this um, sphere is separated into sections. Even so, you know, it's it's reasonably consistent art style. If you can get over the art style, certainly this is a pretty awesome game. So yeah, I've been talking about this for about 15 minutes now, so I will stop this video, we'll end it here. Um, if you're interested in it, I do I do think that this is a very good example of an early access game out there. I, I would say, just, you know, obviously understand what you're buying into. You are buying into something that is very, very much early access. And if you can get over that, if, if that's uh, fine for you, then, you know, jump into it. It's it's a pretty awesome game for what what's there already. Um, so, yeah, with that, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.